you got coaches number one team uh, in the country coming to your building. Is this you tell the team this is an opportunity for them, or how do you tell them to approach this game? Uh, you focus on the game plan of how to win um, more than anything. I mean, I don't think we make it any bigger than you know what it is. Um, you know, we're, we're just trying to get to a point where to figure out how to win um, and to rebound versus a not a very good performance by us uh, versus Indiana. Um, you know, I think that's the biggest thing. So you give them the game plan with Michigan State. You tell them about obviously. Uh, how talented they are, how much depth they have, how physical they are, um, and you go from there. When you look at Michigan State and what they've had to deal with, um, and you know, Izzo's obviously um, you know, not addressed a lot of what has been reported, but um, what do you just uh, what do you credit that to with Izzo and, and him dealing with uh, what they're dealing with off the court and how they can continue to play through that? Um, I think they have a really, really talented team. Um, probably the most talent in the country, the most depth in the country. Um, you know, I don't think the players are dealing with that. I'm sure Coach Izzo is. I don't think the players, uh, it really affects them in any way. Um, you know, I can't tell it, certainly. So uh, they've got, I mean, they, they probably have the best talent in the country. Um, and so that's probably why they're winning games. As well as he's a terrific coach. Sure. Um, in his, his situation, he said he sat down individual players and, and talked to them about how they're dealing with some of the distractions. Um, would you take a similar approach, you know? You're comparing our situation to theirs? No, no, no. Just obviously with some of the injuries and things, the distractions that have gone on with this team this year. Have you talked to the team about what, what What are the distractions besides the Reggie situation was a month ago, but other than that, we've had injuries. Right. So. But a lot of Noise. What is the outside noise? We've had a lot of injuries. I don't, I don't, I don't know what the outside noise would be. We're I mean, frustrated we're, with the losing. You know. If they don't understand why we're not playing well, I, I'm not going to address them. I think our players understand why we may be struggling a little bit. They don't. So if anyone's frustrated, probably just not paying attention. Uh, as I've said before, I don't know too many teams that could endure what we've endured. Uh, We've lost players. I mean, Amir Coffey's missed nine league games, right? Um, there's not excuses. Those are facts. So I don't. There's not a lot. Of, there's not a lot of noise. It's more. Let's get healthy. Sure. You mentioned the players understanding it. For Nate, obviously, he had high expectations for his senior year. How do you think he's handled just a lot of his important teammates going down and not being able to play with him? And I think he's been good. Like we've kind of talked about before, but you've been on a hiatus. Um, I've not sensed that he feels sorry for himself. I would understand it, you know. I mean, uh, how many games ago we were sitting at thirteen and three, right? Now we're fourteen and thirteen. Um, but Nate's been playing really, really hard, um, you know. So that's that's been uh, really good to see because that's got to be hard for him. Bacardi and Gas don't play as much, um, you know. But he's still trying to win. He's still playing hard. Uh, so that's a testament to Nate. Well, he's not a senior. Right. Uh, but Nate's a senior. But he's obviously, he's, you know, there's been a lot of expectation for him, but it's been different since Reggie's been out, since the injuries have been out. Um, have you talked to him just about how he's been dealt with? That? I mean, I talk to them all every single day. We talk about a lot of things. Um, you know, I mean, it's, it's, everybody's kind of dealing with it, uh, you know, but we're all go to work each day and work hard. Um, so we talk about it all the time. But these guys have been very, very positive. They've had good attitudes. They're working hard in practice. Uh, you know, with the exception of last game, I thought they've really been competing well. Uh, Michigan State freshman Jaron Jackson, um, I know he's not like you've watched him from the beginning of the season until now, but what do you see out of him? Uh, maybe He's a lottery pick. Yeah, probably a top five pick. I mean, uh, you know, probably the kid from Arizona, Marvin Bagley. I think there's a – kid from overseas that everybody loves and then I would think he's right around there you know he's got he's got what the NBA wants he's got um, size he's got length uh, he can shoot the three um, so he's he's terrific I mean it's it's a it's it's just amazing the talent that they have um, you know it's obviously and they've got a lot of it I mean they've got you know they've got a lot of players so and and Jackson's a a, a terrific one what stood out to you in the 
Uh, I thought Miles Bridges did a tough shot at the end. I mean, you know, I uh, it was anybody's game. Um, you know, it wasn't it wasn't a masterpiece by any means. Uh, it was kind of a slugfest, but you know, Michigan State's going to do that to you. Uh, but they're both two really, really good teams. Purdue's really good, and Michigan State's very good. Um, you know, I mean, Michigan State, it's kind of like everybody's implied, hey, what's wrong with Michigan State? Well, they're 24-3, and three, and some got them ranked number one in the country. So uh, they're a terrific team. Uh, they could beat you a variety of ways. It's got, I would say it's his most talented team since I've been here. Kind of a program changer when you get a guy like Bridges coming back for another year. I mean, a lot of people thought he'd go. Yeah, I was hoping he'd go. <laughs> um, but he's uh, yeah he's really good and um, you know he's he's uh, he approaches it seems like he approaches it the right way loves college uh, loves you know Michigan State plays hard uh, very very talented and so he's another guy uh, who will be an NBA player um, you know so to go along with uh, you know Langford Ward's an NBA player I mean they've got they've got they're stacked. You mentioned Nate not feeling sorry for himself, but. Guys, what about you? How do you keep yourself from feeling sorry for yourself? Because you come into this season arguably the most talent that you've had on a roster since you've been here. Well, um, well, clearly nobody's going to feel sorry for me from talking to Marcus. So I'm not. Uh, I don't. To be honest, I mean, it, every year you go into a year, and everybody always asks you about your team. You know, you like your team. You know, high expectations, and for the most part, every coach is really, really guarded, right? They kind of well, we'll see because they know there's a lot of things that can happen out of our control uh, in this profession. You know, and injuries is, is one of them. Um, did I ever think that we'd get hit like this? No, I did not. Um, you know, so for me, it's about staying positive, um, you know, staying confident and believing in what we're doing, uh, staying, you know, understanding, having some good perspective of, you know, why certain things are the way they are, as well as what I can do to coach, you know. But the one thing that coaches do, I think, for the most part, when some adversity hits is we put our head down and we just try to do our job. And uh, I've done that. Uh, you know, so, yeah, it's, it's, there's days where I've been like, yeah, I feel sorry for myself, but I can't do that. You know, and you get a snap out of that uh, quickly. Um, but I, 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 I did have high expectations. Um, but, you know, certainly there's been a lot of things that have hit. But, you know, we got to continue to coach him very hard. Um, and continue to whoever is available tomorrow, and I don't know about Dupree and Amir, if you guys do ask, I have no idea, um, you know, to, to put them in a position to win, and we're going to keep doing that. Just going to ask about the yeah, nothing new. Um, obviously, Dupree has never been to practice in a long time. Um, with, with Amir, he did say before, though, that he would like to see him practice before he yeah. gets cleared to play. Yeah, we've done a little bit with him, um, and then we'll see where he's at today. Um, but all those with a mirror, you know, it'll be kind of a game time deal. Uh, but I really don't know. Is Dupree's situation something that only time can heal? Like once you get to the off season, just shut him down yeah. for a month or two? And yeah, let it sort of yeah. I think so. I think rest is the key. Um, and, you know, he wants to play badly. Um, you know, but we, like I've kind of said, I mean, just the pain, depends on where his pain is at. And uh, if it's tolerable, he'll play through it because – that's what he wants to do, and it's not going to further damage anything. Uh, but if it's at a point where it's a little too painful, then we'll hold him out. Uh, so we'll see. You know, he's got another day and a half of rest. We'll see where he's at. In the last three games, Michigan State's kind of held on until the end because other teams have had chances to beat him in their last three. What are you seeing from them that's kind of pushing him over the edge to, to get him on the right side? Of the well, who did they play before Purdue? Who were the other two? I forget. They had Iowa. It was 93 -90. At Iowa and then Penn State at home? Uh, in Indiana. Indiana. At Indiana. Um, what am I seeing from them? Well, the end of games, that's kind of well, I mean, I thought that Miles Bridges hit a shot that, you know, NBA players hit. Um, and he's a talented player and a really good player. Um, you know, at Indiana, I thought they, you know, Indiana's smaller and they physically, they're, they're just so big. Um, and then, uh, who's the other one that we said? Iowa. At Iowa was just kind of an up and down offensive, uh, you know, juggernaut of a type game. Uh, Iowa had a chance really to get a big basket at the end. They didn't get it. Um, you know, I, I, I just think that Michigan State's one of the best teams in the country, um, you know, to go along with one of the best coaches to ever coach the game. Um, so you put those two things together, pretty good recipe for success.
No, he hasn't called me. I don't know what his problem is. No, I don't know. He's a self-absorbed guy. No, I, I, I've, I talked to him. Um, I talked to him uh, a little, you know, after hit that whole stuff. Just reach out to him, you know, just as a coach because I got a lot of respect for him. Um, but no, I haven't talked to him. I mean, you know. But if I did, I'm sure it'd be great. I'll talk to him tomorrow. Did he respond to you? He did. So. Yeah. All righty. Thank you.